My good friend, James Clem. What are you up to these days? Hey, did you get a haircut? No, I just kind of combed it back and put a little mousse on it. I get a haircut this Friday, but I guess I'm not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> no, I think you went in somebody's basement and got a haircut illegally. You're going to have the cops <laughs> looking for you pretty soon, right? Well, I've had my team back in the office this week. That's been kind of great. But I, I had a really moment of clarity in a very s solemn way. Could I share How's it? How's that? Yeah, I want to hear I was it. Using, I was using that Bellis 3D, and what I found is that <laughs> my head is so big, I had a hard time getting Wait, my show face. Wait, show it again one more time. And it cut off the forehead. <laughs> and then it was a revelation of, look at that beautiful double, triple chin. <laughs> but it, it was a revelation. We have made the framework for the mask. We're getting that ready to use with our uh, our level twos and level threes. But what we're going to be getting our uh, 95s in, I think, on Friday. And then what we're going to do is use level twos over the 95s so we can get more use out of the 95s, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But uh, but this was very, uh, you know, without my glasses on, I, and, you know, that double chin, it you know, it puts you in a new level of appreciation of the fact that time does happen. <laughs> it, you know, it is it is very creepy to see yourself in three dimensions digitally on a flat screen. And yeah, it's so accurate. I was I was even looking at my mu my mustache, and uh, that was amazing. Yeah, don't blow wow. that up. We don't need to see it. That. It, 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 <laughs> almost, it, it almost scares me. See. <laughs> It's good. You can get that trim too. Hey, so how are you uh, today? How was your I'm day in office? And uh, good. We're uh, we're back in the swing of things. Our hygiene is full. Uh, you know, I'm a, probably about eighty percent to what I was before without really doing much. I think our patients are ready to be wow. back. They're ready to get their stuff done. I've already done a full veneer case. I've done four implant cases. I I, I mean, we're not even into a maybe a week and a half. And uh, these are people obviously that you know, we're waiting to get their stuff done. Yeah, we're kind of yeah. chomping at the bit, as we'd say down in good old Texas. But next week, I got nothing. I got a whole open schedule. So hopefully I can get some new patients. So. That means you can get some more opportunities in. As we always would say, uh, <laughs> I, I know a D St. George, I did classes from her years ago, and she would say, you know, if you have time open next week, that's actually a good thing because it's going to be surprising for you. You uh, know, as dentists, even for me, you know, I always had security on being booked way out. But yet, I don't want to be booked way out anymore because that means I have to work harder. So, hey, uh, <laughs> uh, who was the who was the practice management consultant you just mentioned? D. St. George. Do you remember she, her? Yeah, she's from uh, England, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a funny story about her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember years ago when Iva Clark came out with their yellow socks? <laughs> Do you remember that for the multi-link? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I, had, uh, at, I, I was having a little recall issue there for a while. Yeah, moment. probably about 10, 12 years ago. Anyway, yeah. at the Chicago Midwinter meeting, uh, I got yeah. to go to a special engagement. They gave a big award out, the Chicago Midwinter, to, I uh, uh, can't remember. But anyway, she was, she was at the meeting. We were having drinks, and I was sitting right next to her, and my good friend, Bill Butler, who was the associate dean of the dental school I went to, uh -huh. he and I were being a little obnoxious, and <laughs> she didn't like it. Oh, really? We, yeah, oh. We, were, we were being a little, maybe a little too loud for her. And she looked over at me and her English, and she's a nice woman, but we were probably yeah, oh, upsetting yeah. she's, her. She's a sweetheart. She, she leaned over to me and she goes, I find your attitude very obnoxious. And I go, well, not as obnoxious as these socks. And so I pulled my socks up, or my pant leg up, and there was a yellow <laughs> multi leg. She did not like me at all. So I'm sure she's great in what she does, but... Well, she had a lot well, of wisdom, and and you know, Todd, I like you even with your yellow socks. It's it's cool. I love them. <laughs> I still have them, actually. I keep stuff like that. I like the mementos of uh, my career, so that's one of them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so uh, everybody, we have a new Facebook page. I thank everybody yeah. for. Um, I thank everybody. For, yes, thanks for uh, liking it. And uh, James and I are very honored to have this, and including our uh, our great viewers. So uh, make sure you like this and share it. Uh, we're gonna make it better. We got more things coming down the line and some great interviews. A lot. So uh, the a demo lot of show things. live, yes, that looks so, good. Yeah, and they can also find that on YouTube now. The Dental Show Live. Yes, and for those that uh, we've interviewed, uh, we are getting up the recorded uh, interviews up. So I or James will let you know when that happens. Correct. Yeah. Good job, Todd.
I want to let you know, <laughs> Todd is the graphic artist that did that logo. And I, you just, you have an art bud. And you, as soon as you sent it to me, and I, I even shared it with my wife, she goes, that's nice. You know, first yeah. impressions are everything. Todd, regardless of what happened with those yellow socks, you make <laughs> great first impressions. And I think you did a, a bang up job with this, uh, this logo. Thank you well, for thank doing you. that. I think I need to call St. James up and apologize. I shouldn't have been so much that night. I, well, I know, but hey, we all have moments. I, I can remember some things in my past where I'm going, how did I actually say that or act that way? And, uh, you know, th those are just the way you grow through time. I don't, and, you know, try to become a better person and learn through the experiences of life. But, but when you're in Texas, you're allowed to be pretty freelancing, right? I heard that. You're, da you're damn straight. That's how we say it down here. <laughs> hey, James, you got a you got a deep thought for us. I and then we'll do. Bring on it's our guest. Take into our incredible guest, and this is a man of enthusiasm, and he's done a lot in his career already. We'll let you listen to his story and what he's doing now. But this is Mario Andrade, and when he won that Indianapolis 500, I still remember that. That was a big deal for me as a kid, and that was in 1969. I still remember that like yesterday. I was watching it with my dad. And here's a quote from him that I, I just I like. Desire is the key to motivation, right? But it's the determination and commitment to the unrelenting pursuit of your goal, a commitment to excellence that will enable you to attain the success you seek. So motivation is about being perseverance and just going for it. And I think Dr. Bob Marcus is the essence of winning a race every day. Bob, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming on, brother. Thank you for having me. Hello from San Diego. <laughs> you yes. are the king of San Diego, the Bob, ultimate doctor of San Diego just, County. Just anointed this week. <laughs> Bob, I do need to educate you in one thing, and I was educated on this by Todd, because he showed us a map at a prior cast of where Texas was. And do you realize that I'm in Northern El Paso? So that would put you in Southern El Paso. Did That's you right. know that? <laughs> <laughs> we are in the southernmost El Paso before you get to the Mexican I El Paso. Yeah. I feel it. <laughs> yeah, oceanfront property out there. Very good. Ocean. So Bob, what have you been doing during all this uh, time off, so to speak? And uh, where do you see us? where do you see us all going? Well, mostly I've been doing gardening. Oh, good. We, <laughs> right, right before this all happened, I was doing a lot of traveling and talking about dentistry all the time. And mm -hmm. we were putting in a new driveway. We needed a new driveway. And this was kind of happening behind the scenes. And I'd come home and see it for a day or two and then leave and go somewhere else. And the new driveway went in and then the world came to an end and we all yeah. stayed home. So now all the machines that drove over the grass and ruined all the pipes and sprinklers and everything else. Now I'm the new gardener. So I've been spending a lot of time digging and putting in sprinklers and moving dirt around and watering dirt. And eventually we're going to have some grass there. So, but right now I am the gardener and fixing stuff. My attic is super clean. <laughs> attic, I, you could Purging, literally huh? have a, a, you could have a, a function in my attic at this point. We, oh, we, could, wow. we could all meet up there. I like it. But yeah, well, doing a lot of stuff around the house, and it's 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 a weird reacclimation. My whole life, I as a dentist, we don't go anywhere. You know, we we may be on a vacation, but mm -hmm. we don't we don't travel for work. And then about a year ago, I stopped the clinical dentistry and started traveling for work. And now here we are back home again. So it's it's been an interesting a bit interesting circle. So what are you been through? It trends. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, James. Sorry. Go ahead. No, Texas first, my friend. Oh, man. No, California. <laughs> Age before beauty. <laughs> no, uh, so what, you know, you're in San Diego. You sold your practice fairly recently, right? And now what are you up to these days? So that our viewers kind of know where you're at in your career. So this, this was about a year ago that the practice sold. I sold it to a fantastic dentist and a, a person who was already my friend before that named Sean Feely. Already a Sarek guy, and our practice was really kind of deep into the whole Sarek, you know, mentality and the one day mentality. And he took over and has done remarkably well. The patients like him. We kept the staff the same. So it really was a nice transition. Everybody, including me, was 
happy. A lot of people wondered, you know, why did you why'd you do that? Why'd you retire in the middle of your career? Why would you do that? And when I talked to patients and folks that I don't really know, I just said, well, you know, I want to move into the educational field, which, which is true. And I'd already been doing a lot of stuff, as you know, educating other dentists about technology and treatment planning and stuff like that and been dabbling in it, but also trying to be a dentist where I'm the only dentist in the practice. So nobody to take over when you're gone. So it, it's tough to do both. Yeah, we know the feeling. <laughs> About a year and a couple months ago, I started having some visual problems and I thought it was just something got in my eye or whatever to that. I thought it was that. And after a few doctors and a few MRIs and we realized there was something wrong and it was starting to get to the point where it was affecting it a little bit. I could still do the dentistry, but it was hard. It was super bad headaches and I have to take longer breaks. And I was afraid I was gonna mess something up. And that's the honest truth. And so I had to step back. So it was kind of an involuntary office sale and retirement, though I said to the world and to the patients in our transition letter, hey, I'm stepping back to go into education because I don't wanna be negative. I mean, everybody has medical stuff and why do I need to transmit mine? There are worse problems too. So that was a weird transition. It was kind of sudden. I went from January wondering what was going to happen to March the practice was sold. Wow. wow. So it was quick yeah. and, quick and thank, thanks for Sean, Dr. Feely. Just I called him up. I was at a friend's house and he, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Bob Graham, is a normal surgeon. I just called. He's been looking to move you know, to closer into San Diego. He was in Ramona, which is east of San Diego. And I said, no, you know, he, he has a good practice. He's not going to want to change anything. But I made the call sitting in Bob's house and one thing led to another and here we are. So, so yeah. it's uh, it was a good thing for everybody involved. It wasn't, a, I would have rather kept, I, I was getting to the point, you know the feeling you guys where you finally get to the point in practice. And I think that's at about the, maybe the 20 year moment where you are truly on autopilot. Mm-hmm. You figured it out. Your staff's been there a long time. Everybody knows you don't even have to look up and it's always going to be the right thing in your hand. That's where we were. Not that we were stepping back and letting it flounder, but we were, we finally got to the point where we said, okay, good. Now, now we really know what we're doing. We can make it come out really well every time. And then that happens. So you never know. I, I had my own COVID-19, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I did. So it was permanent. So I, I get what everybody's going through. Believe me, I, I get it more than more than they think. I, I get what's happening. It's it's scary and it's uncertain, especially in California. And we have some of our officials saying, oh, we're going to open now. And then we have another official saying, well, it'll be three months. Yeah. And in the dental office, the difference between now and three months, that's a lifetime. That could be that's bankruptcy. Oh, that yeah. That's it's a financial lifetime. It's hard on the patients. I mean, that's... That that's a big that's a big difference. So dentists are able to open now, you know, with they have a lot of restrictions and a lot of procedural changes, but they are opening now. So we're hoping patients come in. I know in some practices there's a lot of pent up demand and they love the dentist and trust, and other practices may have a harder time. Yeah. So, we'll see. Yeah. Well, I had I have my team in there this week and we're ready to open and do the uh, uh, the designated procedures that we know we can do now, and that could change overnight. We never know right. on how fast. I know even in Texas, it opened up so quickly where even Todd thought, right, Todd, you, you thought you were going to go through May, and then all of a sudden, boom, yeah. you, were, you were there. So Yeah, it happened faster, That's... I thought, which is a good thing. Uh, my opinion, we got to get this thing going through. It's time to start living again. Uh, you know, I know we got to be safe and everything, but let's get through the silliness and get back to work and start yeah, taking absolutely. care of the things that are actually wrong. I start feeling bad about, uh, like I'm in a dermatology building. There's one of the biggest dermatology groups in, in Texas. I'm in their uh, bottom floor and I'm thinking how many people didn't get their biopsy for their squamous cell carcinoma in the last six weeks so that's just delayed treatment you know for that guy and it's just more and more and more so it's time to or time to heart to work ass, or they're saying a lot of people put off important surgeries right yes you would think they were necessary or definitely necessary but kind of got sidelined even so yeah 
I've always joked if either one of our governors had a broken front tooth, I think dentists would become essential <laughs> real fast. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I, I don't love the word essential. I think that was part of our problem. You know, this word essential, I always thought the word essential means absolutely necessary. I, I mm -hmm. always thought when something's essential, I need it. I need that. And uh, they kind of use the word essential to describe Home Depot and not dentists. And so I wish there was a different word because the, the connotation is wrong. And we right. sit back and go, what, we're not essential? What are you talking about? We're part, of, if anybody understands PPE, it's us. And we get it. So, you know, yeah. we, can, we can be careful. But this whole essential thing kind of, you, that you know what I was so impressed with on Monday morning, we had a team huddle for about two hours and, and my team members really did their homework because it was really important for me to make sure they felt they were safe and we were going to go in a direction where everybody could work together and they just took it and ran with it. And I, I'm so proud of them for that. It's just, uh, you know, it shows you the character that I've been working with for a while. So uh, you've been uh, you've been educating a lot. So I, I've heard you lecture. You're a great guy. Anybody that can hear Bob Marcus speak should definitely absolutely sit in the back row and Stop. and be ready to leave. No, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, you're one of the funny guys. But one of the things that I love about listening to you is that I, you're pragmatic. You bring things into reality and how it it affects everyday dentists and your You've been one of the key opinion leaders in the CERT community for many years. And, you know, how do you feel about technology right now? Do you think this is a time for people to take an opportunity or a time for people to maybe see how the, the waves are going to shake well, out? You know, it's interesting. The whole, the, the whole technology thing is interesting because we, we, we take a whole bunch of stuff in dentistry and we call it technology. Mm -hmm. And I think right now, I'm always bullish on technology. I always say if it lights up or turns on or has a digital display, I want it. But when, when you kind of sift down what you really should have, you know, think of it this way. I know as small business owners and as dentists, we're very observant people. All of us are. And when I walk into a small business, I don't, it could be any, it could be a, could be a flower shop. It doesn't matter. My antenna are up. And I'm looking, and if I walk into a business and the two people behind the desk are arguing with each other and he turns to me and says, she doesn't know what she's doing. You know, I, we notice these things. And we, we are observant to customer service. And now I think our patients in tenor are gonna be up too, even more than they were before. So I think it's, it's, it's all about trust. You know, we, as dentists, we need to reassure patients that we're doing everything we can. And this is my, everything I talk about, and people have seen me talk, I always say the same thing. I wanna talk about honesty. Let's be honest. Let's be honest with, there's three ways of being honest. I truly believe this. One is when you're looking in the mirror, when you're by yourself, nobody knows, and you're honest with yourself. And then one is you're honest with, with people around you, with with your your personal relationships in your life. And then, honest in your professional life. And it's hard to be all three. You know, if you, I don't, if you've had that feeling, if you're having that feeling all the time where you get home and look in the mirror and say, yeah, I probably shouldn't have put that crown in. I probably should have re-imaged that. And if that's happening a lot, there, there's, you have an honesty issue. And you have to, that's the hardest one is the mirror one, the mirror one. It's, it's easy to lie to yourself. And I think that with patients with their antenna up, I really believe that tech belongs in the office and we need to tell the patients we have it. I've always said, put the mill in the front of the office, not in the back. Show the patient, tell them what you're doing. So there are texts that I think belong in every dental office. Belong. One, digital x-rays. It belongs in the dental office. Think about it now. Hmm. Think about it now with your PPE and whatever you're going to wear during a procedure that involves aerosols. Yeah. And now you're going to run in the back and do a quick dip on an x-ray? <laughs> now you're going to... <laughs> so I think if you haven't gotten to, and we had digital x-rays, I believe in the year 2000 is when we got that. That's 20 years ago. So if you're not digital x-rays, and right now speaking to the choir, because the people that watch James Klim and Todd Ehrlich, they're the choir. Yeah. They're a lot of tech people. Your average dentist who doesn't give a crap about having the office up to spec, he's not on this, this show, <laughs> sadly. Right. But I think we should all have digital x-rays. If we don't, go get it. 
Yeah. Go get it. It's easy, totally easy, no learning curve. The, the sensor's a little bigger than the film. You know, software is easy now. Right. Number two, I think we should all be paperless. If we okay. still have paper, we're searching around at the front desk. Oh, I hold on a minute. Let me go grab your chart. Where's the chart? Did you take our chart? That is, <laughs> that, that's done now. I mean, computers are not expensive. They're not hard to learn. We don't have to become an IT person. You don't even need an IT person. Some of these softwares are even in the cloud now. When it's Eagle Saw, yeah, yeah. They, they, you don't need an IT person anymore. They've gotten beyond that, or at least not much. So I think that's, a, that's one. And I imagine a lot of people on this call have both of those. And I think a third one is intro cameras. I always say, if you're going to show a patient something, you want to talk to a patient, say, hey, here's what's wrong with you. I figured it out. I would say something like, hey, I took a look at everything. I took a careful look. I also considered your x-rays. And I figured it out. Let me show you. And that's where we need an intro photo. I think showing a patient an x-ray is an enormous mistake. They don't know what it is. Right. Next time you see a patient that you haven't talked about, pull up a random x-ray, a PA of something, right? An easy one. And show it to a random patient and say, what do you see here? And they're going to be like, I have no idea what I see. <laughs> There's no reason to see. You see how it's a little darker right here? That's DK. There's no reason to take the patient to dental school. Take yep. an intro yep. photo. Say, here's a picture of the tooth. And let's say it is interproximal DK. Say, here's a picture of the tooth. And the great news is, as you can see here, the top part's still in really good condition. But the x-ray shows that underneath over here, that's where our problem is. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it there. That's what they need. I think those three things are, you have to have those three things. And I'm not talking about a camera. Hey, go get the camera. Abby, where's the camera? Put one in each operatory. Yeah, agree. Easy one. Yeah. Pick it up, button, and I, it, it should be easy. And of course, fourth for me is having some sort of CAD CAM system. I, I love CEREC. I think it's the easiest to use. Like, I love my iPhone, but I have no idea how it works, and I don't want to know. And I see CEREC like that. It's easy to use. Is it perfect? No. You know, it's a computer. There's going to be a crash. There's going to be an issue that they need to – how many updates have Microsoft and Apple come out with over the years to fix these things? But of what's out there, I think it's the best one, and I think it's imperative. You know, I think if, if I'm Serona right now, if I'm Serona or one of their, um, you know, their, their distributors, I'm figuring out a way to get a CEREC into dental offices. Tell the patient, by having this brand new machine, I'm seeing you half the times. I'm cutting down your exposure to viruses and everything else by half. That's a yeah, big good deal. Point. If I'm yeah. Serona right now, I'm figuring out a way to get Cerex into people's hands. No, nope. do it like these car companies. What yeah. was one Ford Motor Company where you don't have to pay anything for ever? What? <laughs> <laughs> they just give you the car. Right. Do it like Ford Motor Company or one of these car companies saying, "Hey, you know, we're going to give you this thing for nothing. For nothing, you don't have to pay a dime for six months, for a year, or whatever. And after that, we'll have financing that's low interest." zero one whatever point nine whatever these car companies do it's not easy but it, it's possible and I, and get these into people's hands so they can learn how to use it and make it efficient before they ever pay for the dang thing so to, to me that's the four pieces of tech that i think belong in today's forget COVID 19 it belonged before but it's even yeah. more it's more even important more now. Obvious yeah. now more obvious now so Anyway, that, I'm bullish on that kind of stuff. I think if you walk into an office and your antenna are up and I see wood paneling from 1970 and everything is old, I don't want to be there. Yeah, I want to be in a place that looks like it's the best. You got the best stuff. You got the best people. You got the best technology. To me, it matters. Yeah, I think uh, I think I completely agree with all that. I the it's still the fear though. It's the fear of learning. It's the fear of change. Um, it's the fear of uh, failure. Uh, it's all the things that add up to keep somebody from buying any technology. But this, uh, what I look at it like is that there's never been a better time to learn you're something. Off. <laughs> I mean, it, you're you're off. You don't. You're at least anything. partially off, depending yeah, where you right. live. Right, exactly. And you got to, yes, and, you know, managing the PPE stuff isn't that hard. You just do it. But the thing is. That's is, not that different. I mean, everybody's going crazy over that. The fact is we've been doing PPE and dentistry before exactly. this all happened. Is it a little different? Yeah, now I have to put a different gown on. A different, But it's we, we understand the idea. We're not the people I see when I'm walking around with a mask on, not covering their nose. Like, we, we get it. We, we get <laughs> how to not touch our face. We get how we wash our hands. 
I've seen people with gloves on. They're driving their car with the gloves on. They get out of their car. They go in the market with the same gloves on. They get back in the car. Those gloves didn't help at all. You know, we get that. And you know, by the way, everybody thinks this is a big change. Did you know that dentists only started wearing gloves around the 1980s? Uh, you're you're uh, dating me. I I practiced for two and a half years before wearing gloves outside of surgical procedures. That's I'm your man right here. It was, it was like HIV that really brought it to the forefront yeah, early was. 80s yeah. and or late 80s, I should say. And I, mean, I was in dental school. I graduated in in 1993, and we were mm -hmm. wearing gloves, but a lot of our professors weren't. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't need them for this. Here, let me just stick my finger in there. So we get that. But it's not that old. That and that was a big change in the '80s, right? You got to wear gloves. What? I I got to wear gloves. And then, did you know the standard precautions or these universal and standard precautions? That was just '96, '96, mm -hmm. when we started really, you know, wearing the face shields, the gloves, the masks, the gowns, the proper clothing. It's not that old. It's this is just another one of those. Yeah. For us in dentistry, the hard part is convincing our patients that they're going to be okay. That's yeah. the hard part. You know, interesting enough, in uh, in my area of Texas, I think most, I'd say probably 80% of the patients I've seen so far in the last two weeks, they're, they've they been good. I haven't had any questions about any of it because I think they already knew that yeah. we were already doing to, doing to some level. Yeah. And, you know, if, if there is any question, I'd highly encourage anybody watching out there, make sure you educate them that we are already doing this. We are already wiping things down. You, you, right. There wasn't a fear already. So a lot of communication skills right now. I absolutely agree. And there's a narrative there too. Somewhere in there is a narrative that we need to develop with our front desk person. Just yeah. a reassuring sense that any time, like, hey, I want to tell you in our office, you're you're compl we've got you. We've got you. We've got you taken care of. You know, things things have changed in the world, but we we're there for you. Some there's something I, that may not be the right way to say it, but there's something that needs to be said just to kind of let the stuffiness out of the room when that patient first, or when they park in the lot and we say, wait in your car, we'll call you when. I think it's a better way to say that, like to, <laughs> rather than being like putting a big sign on the door that says, I saw one at some restaurant. There's a big sign on the door, it's a big stop, a big stop sign on <laughs> printed on a piece of paper and some instructions. It's like, that's a little over the top. Maybe we can figure out a way to gent, gent to make that a little gentler, but. Yeah. yeah, but there, there's a reassuring narrative we need to say. A lot of patients, particularly elderly, where I am in San Diego, in North County, we have a lot of elderly folks, and they're they're a little more scared. They're a little more scared. Yeah. You know, these these nursing homes, we have a couple of huge ones right here in Rancho Bernardo and Poway, where I live, and oh. people are a little bit nervous, and so you know, they, they yeah, need a reassuring. Yeah, a large a large portion of my clientele, they're uh, older than me, and and uh, in fact, my patients are getting aged with me. But they're safe. They feel safe. Uh, I think a lot of it. A lot of it's going to be about the relationship they have with the office and the type of style that I've practiced. You know, it's all about people feeling safe and secure in your presence, and that doesn't change just because COVID came around. That was there beforehand. I think Todd said a really good poignant concept here and that is communicate what it you was do. So good. A lot of times we don't say anything, but now we communicate it. And I think the other thing is really have to make sure your team is on board. Um, I was so impressed with my team this week, just getting in there, make, creating the flow, being creative. I didn't micromanage it at all. I just stepped back and let them go for it. And I, in the meanwhile, I do what I do. So it was good. I'm just looking forward to when we don't have to hear about this all the time anymore. Yeah, I think I, literally, I, this is our conversation 24 hours. What would we be talking about if it weren't for this? <laughs> I, I'm just amazed at how. I don't even know how these 24-hour news stations do it. Ah, uh, no. We, we're going to need more stories on this. There I'm, you go. I'm just amazed that I can, you can't open up any social media mm -mm. or any news outlet without that being the top thing. Yeah. And so that it's unimportant. I, I don't want to minimize it. I'm just I heard it already. Corona but, fatigue. There you go, but Bob. I, I love your enthusiasm this evening, and I've always loved it ever since I've known you. The last year, you've been traveling the country, right? Helping other dentists, guiding them, travel the country, decisions and things like that. I'm working with Patterson Dental and Ivo Clark, Vividen, and Serona. Mm -hmm. And I travel around to various places in the country. And 
we hold study clubs for users, and we've had some amazing. I mean, in San Diego, thanks to the real king of the San Diego, the real man. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real king. We have a fantastic study club, a big group of enthusiastic folks that just love what they're doing. It's kind of the 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 epicenter of this epic women movement that mm-hmm. has really taken fire with these amazing dentists. Dennis of the future, yeah. And Chivy yeah. as our as our, our kind of local spokesperson, and these amazing women. Remo's just done a fantastic job with all this, yeah. and we have so you know we have so much. We, we in San Diego, it's not weird to have a Sarek. You, you wouldn't put an advertisement out. Hey, we have one day dentistry because every everybody does. <laughs> Remo's Remo is hmm. saturated the market through an amazing amount. So whoop, that, yeah. that'd be. Bill. So let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you just for a second, because Remo did make a comment a, a little while ago, and he says, uh, "Go, Bob! No costume tonight." <laughs> yeah, we've been doing <laughs> seminars. There's a story behind that. We held a couple seminars where Remo's been Remo's been the most dressed up, but we're all trying to keep up. We held a uh, restoring implants live, where I hooked up an actual Prime Scan and transmitted it, and it, it worked. We had a couple hundred people, or maybe more, on there, and it. I could scan and it pretty pretty good, and we held another seminar on uh, kind of a truncated version of 50 tips. So when I travel the country, I kind of talk to these to Sarek folks all around the country and keep. It, it's amazing how the same we all are. You know, it's yeah. it, it, yeah. the enthusiasm amongst the group is is the same. I've been, you know, as far north as Grand Rapids and up in Boston and down in Tampa, and it's been fun and then I typically do a program that's an all-day program for folks that have not yet incorporated to Sarek or it doesn't have to be Sarek. I don't know about Sarek, but technology into the office and we kind of do a hands-on and we talk about it you know what's this going to cost me and how am I going to make it work how's it going to change me and we try to help people determine if it's right for them I personally think it's right for pretty much any dental office especially a GP office even a lot of periodontists and oral surgeons are starting to get on it, and orthodontists. Yeah. But uh, so I'm very bullish on it. But we, you know, we want to meet people who have kind of somehow avoided learning about it for all these years, and help them find out what's what's your sticky point here. What's what's going you've on? Got, that you've got some not- good fans in your local area. Shivy did make a comment. She said, "Hi, Bob. You're a great educator. <laughs> one of my favorite speakers." She's, there you we go. Interviewed her. Her interview was awesome. And then. Greg Ray yeah, said hi, and then uh, I got to I got to post up Claudia Cordati because she said hi Bib. She she uh, spelled yeah. your name. She couldn't. It's she her couldn't. it's her accent. It's her accent. She's from, <laughs> she she's not from here. I, she's a hundred percent something else. Argentinian. Something like that. And so Greg Ray hi Bib. Hi, Bib. Greg Ray is in Manhattan now, so he he's oh. in the he's in the the heart of of the uh, of this all, and I you know they. They they're over the top of their curve and they're down and down the other side and I, I do not know if he's even open yet but I, I think he is he oh. moved there a few years ago oh, right in the middle of Manhattan so oh, wow. yeah it's a good we have a great group here we have some amazing dentists yeah, yeah. Dan Vasquez and Tony Hatch and Ron Berry and these mm-hmm. folks that are just just been so supportive of what we've done. And your yeah. lab tech, Frankie Acosta, he's going to be on Friday on our show. And, and uh, I can't, we're gonna have can't forget to mention Eddie Corrales, who no. travels he's gonna the be on. world making smiles. And he's right here in San Diego. And, you know, he's if, for people that don't know Eddie Corrales, if you want to do a, a peers case and you're not comfortable doing the lab work or you don't want to do the lab work on your own and you want to do it in the same day, he'll he'll come to you and do some amazing work. He's he's incredible. I've used him many. Yeah. That's what I miss. And people ask me, what do you miss? Uh, you know, and it's, it, I, I miss the days of Eddie mm-hmm. because we get to, you know, kid around the whole day and screw around and still do a really amazing case and usually eat way too much. And, you know, I, I miss that. I, I miss I miss the staff, you know, Abby and Brittany and Marianne and all the other folks, Lori and Megan and Sarai and all the folks that work with me. That's what I miss. So when I'm home and I'm doing gardening, this becomes your second family. You know how it is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sure, uh, sure. then suddenly you're, I could go there and say hi, but I'd only be in the way. So that's what I miss. Well, yeah, Bob, say, I wanna... you, miss, you miss drilling? I don't miss drilling. I miss, <laughs> I miss people. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to challenge you. 
I didn't tell no. you I was going to say this, so here I go. I, I've practiced here to go, this Bob. all day. I'm and going to challenge these you. Are, these are significant. These okay. are. So you're going to do this. We're going to be okay. very disappointed. So you, uh, even Remo, uh, made another comment. He said that uh, we are a CAD CAM dentist family. And that is something that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Remo's the leader. We'll, we'll just give him that. Yeah, I'll uh, give but, him the king. Uh, he can be the king. No, 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 no. You're the king. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, Remo can be El Jefe. He can be El Jefe. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Daniel Vasquez. He can be El Jefe. But anyway, um, no, you've, uh, you're coming from the most tight family in CAD CAM in the entire world. And that's the San Diego community. You are now Absolutely. out, uh, you know, not just uh, motivating dentists, you're encouraging them to get into a, a, a brotherhood, a lifestyle that the three of us know very, very well. I challenge you to start making the rest of the U.S. like San Diego. That yes. would make, that would bring back original dentistry. It's hard, you know, right? And forget you know, forget COVID nineteen. I mean, this is going to come and go. The funny thing is, we're all opening back up now, but nothing has really changed. It, mm -hmm. The virus hasn't disappeared. We just all kind of came to terms with it. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, I mean, this is my goal in life. I truly think when you walk out of dental school and you buy a practice, or when you when you're setting up a practice, or if you've been in practice a while, I truly think that having a Zarek machine, and there are other CAD CAM systems out there that are also excellent. I just think Zarek is the best one. I said that before, I've tried them all. We have them all. And Patterson, who I rep, uh, work with all the time, sells them all. So it's it's not about, like it used to be, Patterson only sold Zarek, so we only talk Zarek. Now they have them all, or a lot of them at least. I think every dentist should have one. I really do. I think if you're coming out of dental school, and we talk about you know, people, key points are, well, I've shown so many dentists that, and we all, we Sarek users know that it saves money. We were talking before, and I'll re repeat this, as I'm, you're going to be bored to hear it, but That's okay. the other folks haven't heard it yet. A lot of major, we have to look, we're not that good at, as business people compared to people who are business majors spend their life being business people they don't have to have this interruption in business to go drill something they can just think about business all the time mm -hmm. and one thing that they do is they have gone and the and when they're making something whatever it is they've gone to robotics my very close friend tracy francis works at a company that makes parts that go in teslas and do you think there's people making them no 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 there's a big robot that moves all around it's really cool i've seen it that makes the part and whenever you bring a person in, you know this creates overhead expenses and it creates human error. And you may think that you have six people working for you. I have two hygienists, two assistants, and two at the front, six. Well, that's not true. You have another one. That person's not there with you, but that person's in the lab and you're paying that person. Now, not that Frankie and these guys aren't doing fantastic things. A laboratory, believe me, has its place in dentistry. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No doubt. Even if everybody started making single unit restorations on CEREC, a laboratory is extremely important. But for the single unit, day-to-day, bread and butter dentistry, eliminating a human and employing a robot, that's a very smart financial decision. It really is. And forget about for people that don't have it now and they've known it existed all these years and they still haven't bought in, they're not looking for something cool. They're not looking for something fun. You know, we have fun with it. We turn yeah. it on and play with it. Hey, look, it's like playing a video game. Mm -hmm. These people don't care about that. They just want, you know, how much is it going to cost me? All right. <laughs> well, and we've shown time and again, it doesn't cost anything. If you place a couple of crowns, you know, one or two a day and utilize it instead of sending it out, it doesn't cost anything. It costs you a little bit of your time to learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. And remember the red cam days? How hard yeah. that worked? When I bought my CEREC, there was no CEREC doctors or C-Docs. Didn't exist. You know what they gave you? DVDs. Do you remember that? Right. They gave you a bunch of DVDs and you watched them. They were in German, subtitled in English. <laughs> and that's how you learned how to use CEREC. That's yeah, it. That's right. <laughs> there, was no, there was nothing. There was no study clubs. It was just starting. I remember when Sam approached me way back in the mid-2000s and asked if I could be a member of the original mentor group. Because we were people that were already fighting our way through that. We were beta testing that thing. Now when you get a prime scan, the learning curve is really, really 
If let's say we flatten the learning curve. How do you like that? <laughs> I do like that. <laughs> we definitely. It's just not that hard. You can have somebody that's never picked it up, pick it up and start using it. Do you, does that mean you know everything? No, you don't know everything. You need some training, but you can a couple hours of training and you're making single unit posterior teeth, no problem. So mm-hmm. I think every office should go buy one. I really do. Is it an expense? Yes. Is it is it a change? Yeah. Is it for the better? Yes. I think the three of us who have made literally combined probably 50,000 Zarek restorations, we, we if my machine broke, we had two. So if they both broke, I wouldn't just take an impression. I rescheduled the patient. So you can yeah. fix the robot. You got to fix the robot. <laughs> fix the robot. <laughs> Thankfully, it, it didn't break. They don't break very often. But if it if it if it crashed and started, if I had a problem, mm-hmm. I'm going to reschedule the patient. I think that dentistry needs to get there. This is not new technology. This is this is not the future. This is current. Mm-hmm. current. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, we talked earlier before we started the program. What do you think? Uh, a company like Patterson or Henry Schein needs to do to start selling them there's got to be some sort of incentive what do you think yeah what do you think that would look like it's tough because you know everybody knows the bell curve you know the the whole bell curve thing and Mm -hmm. there are people if we look at the bell curve we look at the front end of the bell curve we talk about this all the time in our seminars there are people like us that'll buy anything they come oh look at this cool machine okay sold i got it and those early adopters they don't need to be sold you know they're ready they they just took one look at it and they, they they wanted it now we're at a different part of the market we're kind of in the middle of the market where the people that really wanted it have it. And so a lot of Patterson and China have kind of been living on upgrades. And so to get these new folks in, I think they need to probably offer this very attractive um, financials. Mm-hmm. I would like to see Serona in conjunction with Patterson and Shine go on some sort of offensive in the mainstream market advertising this. Yes. I would yes. like to see it. We started a little bit with the Fred Joy. It was more comedy and kind of shtick. And I love Fred. And he's a fantastic speaker. But in dentistry, we look, oh, that's Fred Joy. He, he, he's one of the best. But your average person watching that TV commercial at home doesn't know who Fred Joy is. They don't know. And so making it funny maybe wasn't the best direction. Maybe we ne- need now to make an ad like car companies do. Ask your dentist if they have a Sarek especially now where you're instead of two visits, it's one. Obviously that's, that's not the exact line, but there's a way to say it. I'd right. love to see them go on an offensive with advertising, you know, on social media, on television or whatever, reach patients, have them yeah. ask for it by name. Exactly. Now, how does BMW and Mercedes keep selling cars? Why doesn't everybody just buy Hondas? Why am I spending 50% more for a car? Because they've done a fantastic job of convincing us that they're better. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I, I like Apple's to see Apple's done the same China. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple's the same thing. You're Apple buying costs. a culture. You're buying a culture. Uh, you go to the Apple, you go to the Verizon store and spend a thousand dollars and the Samsung of two feet away is free. <laughs> <laughs> but you buy the iPhone. So I, I, that, those are two things I'd like to see. I'd like them to, to capture the financing market and go, look, it's free for a year and then you yeah. got to pay for it. And I'd like to see them advertise it. And, you know, I, I've, I, I've been going to branches and talking about this. The mm-hmm. hard part is getting people there because a lot of people like they have fatigue. They I've been told about this before 10 times. Yeah. I yeah. don't want it. We have to make it so we normalize it. So patients are asking for it. Once patients want it, dentists will have to get it. They will. If you're a dentist right now and you walk into the dentist and you're a random patient, you walk in and your dentist doesn't wear a proper mask, doesn't wear gloves, mm-hmm. and walks out and shakes your hand, you're going to be like, no. No, no, I'm looking for a dentist who understands about how to take care of me in today's, with today's problems, let's call it. Right. And I think that that machine needs to be part of that mentality. Mm-hmm. You know, when they call up, I'm a new patient, just want to make sure you have the machine. I might need a crown, that kind of thing. So I think we've, yeah, go that's ahead. hard. But yeah. that, that, would be, that would be where we need to go. We need to, we need to talk to the public exactly. about why it's important. Right now, instead of continuously trying to sell to ourselves, when we know, we know, we already know, we've decided I want one, I don't. So th- that, that, that's a harder way to try to move these machines, I think. Yeah, all three of us, as many, uh, as long as long terms we've, or long time we've had Sarek and, and experienced it, we've all had the stories of where 
a patient comes from three counties away, you know, probably drove by a thousand dentists only because they know that you can get their restoration done in one visit and they don't want their teeth cleaned by you. They just want the restoration done and they move yep. on. We've experienced that yeah. many, many times. So we have a tiny little window of that very thing. And so if, you know, Dent Supply Serona would step up and make CEREC a nationally branded name, a lot of dentists would be having that same perception. I'll give you, I'll give you a really good example of that in dentistry. Okay. Okay. All right. Invisalign. So one of the issues we have currently with Invisalign is the Prime Scan cannot be used to submit an Invisalign case. And OmniCam can. OmniCam can. Prime Scan can. And it's an issue. Now, you and I know that there are other companies out there that offer Invisalign or ClearTray products yeah. that are equally good, sometimes even better, like SureSmile and like the Great Lakes product and like the Strauman product, ClearCorrect. Mm-hmm. But yet doctors say, no, 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 I need to have something that will, will do Invisalign. Yeah. Well, well, why? Tell me tell me why you're stuck on that. Well, that's what my patients want. And I don't want to lie to them and say I'm doing I don't want to advertise Invisalign and give them sure smile, I, which is admirable. But Invisalign has done a fantastic job of convincing the public that it's better than the competitors to the point where doctors are, are buying Iteros, which is pretty much its only talent. It can do other stuff, but that's really... What it's yeah. super good at is Invisalign only. Yeah. So is there a path? Sure, there's a path. We just have to figure out how to do it. Well, it takes a little bit of passion and enthusiasm, and that's what I hear coming through tonight, Bob. No, Bob. I love your energy. It's done It's done well for me in, in the office. We were very yeah. successful, not only by counting you know, production and all that, but we were very successful in that we finished the day and said, hey, we did a good job, guys, today. Yeah. yeah. And we all went home today. That was a good day. We didn't say, oh, my God, I went to an office to do some consulting work. And I was at the morning huddle because I want to observe their morning huddle and see what's happening. And it was kind of a comically bad morning huddle. But forgetting that, <laughs> at one point, somebody said, hey, you know what we have? Uh, let's talk about what we have, what we're delivering to lab case for today. We have some lady, I forget her name. She's already in the waiting room. She's here to get her crown. And all of a sudden, the assistants looked at each other. Oh, my God. And one of them went running out. <laughs> and running, that's just, we don't have the case and she i'll be right back i'm gonna go call the lab okay. and you know i don't want to have that in my office and so to me that whole idea of saying that we did really well for our patients all, all day as opposed to making excuses why we didn't have something mm-hmm. that that's tied, that's the whole mentality uh, uh, of it to me not just Sarek, forget Sarek, of using the best knowing you did, looking uh-huh. in the mirror, and being honest, did I do it right today? Or did I cut corners just because I wanted to make more money today? Which one did you know, I do? You know, Bob, when, Bob you shared that, when you shared that story, it, it actually took me back about 22 years of where that did happen. And, you know, my whole thinking of dentistry and culture of dentistry has so changed with digital platforms, even my CAT scan, all, all the things that I do now, that's what keeps my curiosity alive. And you know what you've done tonight? You've you've ministered to me. You've actually <laughs> rekindled some of my curiosity in a very dramatic way. And, I, you know, even though you may not be practicing, and I know there's a piece of that that you're missing, you are going, there's a purpose for everyone. And you're going to uh, really bless our profession. You got it in you, bud. And well, uh, you, you've always had that reputation uh, for years. Uh, I love San Diego. Your group in San Diego is outstanding. And again, I would uh, reiterate what Todd says. You got to take this passion of the San Diego club. That's right. And just move that around. And a lot of that comes by vision and foresight, which you have. So I, wow. Well, from Thank your you. lips to I God's I just have to right? say that. I had to say that. So. <laughs> well, it's fun. You know, it's fun too. Dentistry isn't always fun. As you know, patient, a lot of patients just hate us because we're dentists, you know, they, they don't, a lot of times in social situations, people say, what do you do? I go, um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what I do. It's because I, I just don't want to, I don't want to hear it. You know, patients just don't want to come. I want to get to the point where once they've decided to come and they've kind of gotten over the idea <laughs> that they didn't want to, then I'm going to give them such a good experience <laughs> that maybe they won't hate it as much next time. Maybe. You know, I, I, I was asked that once on an airplane and I, I was going, OK, I'm just going to have some fun with it. I said, well, you know, I'm a jeweler and I make jewelry for personal parts of the body. And they're going, <laughs> really? I said, and it's cool because I'm integrating technology and people pay me a lot of money for it. And I have total control to put my craft and my body 
and I make beautiful parts for bodies that wear it. And whenever I see them, I always thinking they're wearing my body parts that I made for them. And I am thrilled about it. And she goes, really, what do you do? And I go, I'm a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> the visual of what I just had it was it was priceless. But... And the visual she had. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, as I can say, you can try anything on an airplane. Yeah. Well, Bob. Yeah. Hey, you you were great tonight, man. Do you got any last words? You got a lot of fans. You got your San Diego peeps watching. I know they're all watching you. And uh, you know, I is I want you to I want you to take that to heart. You you start spreading that San Diego message around to the rest of the U.S. And how could you do that? That's the goal. That's the goal. It's, it, it's you know, Remo has, the way he became king, or El Jefe, the way he became Remo <laughs> is by education. Remo doesn't sell. He's not a salesperson. He's selling a product, you know, and people are paying for it. And he makes money that way. But he doesn't come off as... A hardcore salesman he comes off as an educator and he says let me educate you on this and we've had people come to our san diego what we call cad camp which is a monthly evening where we try it out for doctors that don't have it and we've had people say hey you know what this may not be for you so it's i i think that we in san diego we try to do it honestly we try to do it right and try to you know just try just try to keep our head keep our heads high and well look here and all that it's a culture of inclusion, and I think my challenge to our industry, particularly with Dent Supply Serona, that's why I like the Epic Ladies. They're very inclusive. They have that energy of where everybody's included, and I I like what you're doing because I think that's what San Diego has always had. No, I tried They've to had... get into Epic Ladies. They wouldn't let me in, so. Yeah, well, <laughs> now that you've been on our show, you may be able to get in there. But <laughs> you're going to be in I the club. You, I, you're in the club there, but I, I think that's what San Diego has. And whenever I've been down there, it's it's always I look forward to it. And uh, you folks have something really special there with the leadership you've had, and also also the personalities that that come into the fold. So it's a good place to live. It's a good place to practice dentistry. A lot of people want to here, so we're very, we're very yeah. fortunate down here. Yeah, uh, South El Paso. All right, so. Uh... <laughs> Inside joke, Bob. Thanks so much for coming on tonight. Your breath of fresh yes. air, and and uh, thank you, Bob. Maybe you can come out thanks, to uh, my place one oh, day. I want to yeah. thank you for something. You know what? You know what really touched me was when we had the fires up here and we had to evacuate. You know who I got a text from? It was you, buddy. And you offered me and my family to come down and hang out with you guys until we could get back here, and that was very meaningful. I want to let you know that. I didn't ask you for it. You just happened to pop it out of the blue sky. And oh, I always, that, that was really special. So the, thanks the so much. Going, I'll tell this in two, two seconds, two minutes or less, the risk of going along here. There's a reason for that. Because do you remember the fires in San Diego, 2007, our house burned to the ground. Yep. Everything. The only thing we had left was everything that was alive, our pets, our family, mm. a little bit of clothing. I didn't bring my computer, which was really dumb because back then, we didn't have the cloud if, if, yeah. backing up, putting it on a hard drive that was also on the desk that I didn't take. So, you know, these are wow. just big setbacks. COVID-19 is a big setback. You know, losing all your stuff in a fire is a big setback. Your eye getting messed up, can't practice anymore. It's a big setback, but you're still you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're still you. There's, there's no reason to, to these people that say my life is ruined. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Your life is ruined. You're, you're part, you, know, you, you may have a tough year financially. Yeah, a tough year financially. And some people even lost their job. My son had a job coming out of college and they, they took it away before he ever started. Mm. Now he's going to look for something else. Is, is, is his life ruined? No, no, just th this year sucks. But, you know, we're going to look back and say we had good years. We had bad years. 2020 was a tough one. And turns out 2021 has been a great one. And we, if we don't have that attitude, we're never going to recover. So I sent you that text about the fires. Not just it wasn't lip service. There were people that offered us the very same thing when we lost our house and we actually went and lived with for several days one of my wife's friends who did offer that. Hmm. We went hmm. slept on her floor because we had her. So it was that that's from experience, oh. buddy. And so, you know, it, it's it's well, you like it. these lessons. So yeah. Thanks, but, brother. You're you're a great man. You know that, right? Well, we try our best. <laughs> so anyway uh, but thank you. i really appreciate you guys uh, uh inviting me to your program i love it i've been watching it seeing some of my good friends on there and it's 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 been fun 
uh, seeing Mike Detola on there was all sorts of fun. And of yeah. course, seeing friend Chivy was, was, was exciting. So thank you for, for doing this. This is, this is awesome. It's a shame we have to do it at all, but I do appreciate that, that, that yeah. you, you, you guys are doing it. All right. All right, buddy. Thanks. Um, if you want, you can stay on or, uh, just you decide. So hang on just a minute. Uh, James, we can stand uh, if you have any questions or anything, we can hang out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hang on just a second. Okay. Well, James, wow. Uh, great guy. I know, uh, uh good energy. Yeah. yeah. Great energy. He's so knowledgeable. I've learned so much about mm -hmm. the, the business of digital dentistry from him. It's just been amazing. Mm -hmm. So I had to get him, had to get him on for sure. What are your final thoughts? We're gonna we got another show on Friday with the the digital lab guys, Jay and, Looking forward and to Frankie. That. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. And they're intelligent, gifted lab technicians, and you know, that's part of the family. And uh, I really appreciate uh Bob's uh commitment and his enthusiasm. You know, that's not made up, that's who he is. Yep. And even though he's not practicing, I, I think he has a purpose that even may go beyond his wildest dreams because he's, he has a passion and the ability to communicate so well. I really appreciate that. And, uh, just the ability to connect. And that's one reason why I like what we do, right, Todd, even yeah. doing the, these, uh, interviews on, on the inter internet has been really a privilege. And I actually missed not, I missed you, Todd. I actually missed Aww. you from, Monday and Tuesday, but we're both going to be working again. So we're going to probably make this, you know, maybe two or three times a week or we'll see what the trends go. But we have committed to a long term commitment to taking this the dental show live and making it out there for you folks for a long time. So I'm looking forward to that journey with yeah. you. We've got some great uh, guests coming up. I'm not going to reveal that quite yet, but we're next week is already full. And uh, we've got a lot of people that are wanting mm -hmm. to get in the batter's box. So we appreciate all the support you've, you've given us. And uh, James, great, great interview. Uh, we're blessed. Great, we, yeah. we are blessed by the ones that come and talk to us. Amen we to that. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for watching tonight. And we will see you on Friday night with the Digital Lab Guys. That's it. Keep your heart up. Stay safe. Think positive.